The latest trend graphics data reports are out for the city of San Francisco. And in today's video, we're going to be covering the latest housing market data trends and stats coming up on this Bay Area Housing Market Minute. For all you data and stats nerds out there, you have come to the right channel. In today's video, we're gonna be covering all of the latest data reports for the city of San Francisco. But before we get into the data and before we get into the numbers, if you're a home buyer in today's marketplace and you're looking for a comprehensive data set to assist you with your home buying decision making, you can text the word data plus the zip code or the area or the neighborhood that you're looking in and we will get that data sent straight to your inbox. And if you're a home seller, in today's marketplace and you're looking for a data set that's going to help you d decide well it's now a good time to sell my home is it the right time to sell or should i wait until the spring and what should i price my property at what is the right pricing strategy all of that and more in the data set when you text the word data plus your property address to the number down below and we'll get that sent straight to your inbox all right let's dive into the data now, as you can see, this is for San Francisco. I, this is a live reaction, have not looked at this data at all. And so, okay, all right. What you're seeing here, light green line active inventory, meaning the amount of homes that are on the market right now versus the red line, that's a, an amount of homes that have gone pending or under contract this month. And so we're looking at light green, what it looks like, so a couple of observations right away. Number one, Inventory levels have jumped pretty significantly the last two months. I mean, we're talking 20% from the average of 800. I mean, it was very steady at 800 for 10 months. And then boom, in September, we saw that sharp surge in inventory levels versus pending sales have stayed relatively the same. We haven't seen a huge spike or dip in pending sales, except for maybe August, where we got that slight dip in pendings. But right now, things seem to be pretty normal on the pending side of things versus earlier this year. So what's really changed are the inventory levels. More about that in a second. Let, let's, let's continue, let's move on. Now, here's some interesting stuff for us. Wow, okay, so even though we're seeing all of those additional homes on the market, the average home is still selling for 9% above list price. Now, this could be a couple of things. Number one, agents underpricing properties on purpose. So that's definitely part of it. And I believe that to be true. The other thing as well is we're seeing the average days on market at 27. So to me, this is the classic tale of the haves and the have nots. And this is exactly what's going on in the San Francisco market right now. How do I know? I have many agents who work in San Francisco and I'm, I'm hearing the, the same thing from them every single day. Oh my God, offers are due tomorrow, offers are due next week. And so what doesn't add up is are, are, the, are the conditions based on the data and then the conditions that agents are facing in real time here in San Francisco. And so here's what's happening. We have the, we have the movers and we have the, the, the ones that aren't moving. The movers are the, the best homes on the best streets that have upgrades that are, that are uh, nicely refinished or, or for whatever reason have a lot of appeal. And then we have all the homes that are just kind of like meh or even the homes that need a lot of work, need a lot of repairs. And so this subset of homes, the best homes are still selling with three to five to maybe even 10 plus offers. Those are the ones that are driving the sales to list price ratio because those are the ones that are constantly moving. They're churning. They're going like they're literally moving through those week after week after week. Now, these these homes here take maybe 30 days, maybe 60 days, maybe 90 days, maybe 120 days to sell those. That's bringing up the overall days on market average. But these homes right here are still flying off the shelf like hotcakes. And so it's the haves and the maybes and then the have nots, which are the homes that are definitely not selling right now. And in this kind of market, we can see all three segments still uh, very clearly move in their distinct manners. What's interesting too is this is a seller's market even though it may not feel like it, this is still a seller's market. It's just a dumbed down seller's, and that, that's not the right word. It is a much less aggressive seller's market than say what we're experiencing in the East Bay or the South Bay, but it is still a seller's market. And let's look at the absorption rate right now so that you can see 
The absorption rate, I am sh it's at 57% right now, and it's been hovering anywhere between in the 70s and 80s up until September. But what you, what you want to look at here is the fact that anything above a 33% is technically considered a seller's market. So we are still in a seller's market. Now, are we in a seller's market where every home on every street is getting bid up over asking price like the South Bay and the East Bay? No, but it is still a seller's market where the right home that's priced appropriately and marketed appropriately should still experience a very competitive multiple offer situation. So San Francisco, what do I think about it? Well, the inventory thing is, is interesting, and I think that we should continue to monitor that. I definitely don't think that it is a necessarily a, a, a situation where like buyers are going to, are going to benefit greatly from it, perhaps a little bit, but not, not too much. Now, if we start to see the inventory levels get closer to like that 1200 to 1400 level mark where they were at, at last in last year's fall, then yes, we can absolutely expect to see a more buyer friendly environment. But right now, let me tell you, the boots on the ground are telling me one thing. They're telling me, Danny, it's hard out here. We're getting, you know, we're getting three offers, five offers, seven offers. It's still super competitive, even on condos. So we're still seeing a very competitive market. Even in this less aggressive market, it's still not a buyer's market. It's still not a buyer's market. So let's continue to monitor the inventory levels. If you're a home seller, honestly, I don't know if I would delay much longer. And that could be what some of this is, is sellers seeing, oh, wow, like prices are finally starting to kind of pick back up to where they were, you know, about a year and a half ago or so. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily going to last like another six months. It's hard to tell at this point. We don't have enough information. We don't have enough data. Obviously, you can continue to tune into these Bay Area Housing Market Minute reports and and really start to see whether or not like that trend continues. But it'll it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next six months. So if you're a seller, I, I would say like probably the sooner the better. And in a lot of other areas in the Bay Area, I have not been saying that. In a lot of other areas, I've been giving the exact opposite advice. It's okay to wait till you know Q1 or maybe even Q2. Now I don't know if it's safe to wait necessarily for a lot of San Francisco homeowners. So if if you've been thinking about selling, now may be the time. And for buyers out there. Um, I would say it, it's no different now than it was maybe a, a couple months ago, other than you have a, a few more options at your disposal. It's still going to be competitive. It, it could, the, the tides could turn. It just depends on your risk tolerance. Are you willing to kind of take that gamble and wait to see? Because the market's probably going to be in the exact same condition that it's in right now in, you know, three, four, five, six months. So I don't see a lot changing, but we should continue to monitor it, especially if you're on the sell side, that is something that you definitely want to continue to monitor to make sure that the market doesn't get out, get away from you and then you're right back in the position that you were in last fall. That's all for this video. If you're still watching, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. It would really help me out. It really helps this channel out. And so it would really mean the world to me if you click that subscribe button. This is Danny Gould, everyone. I'm selling Silicon Valley and I will catch all of you in the next video.